Welcome to the R video tutorial on artificial neural network models in R. Here we're going to learn how to use R to fit artificial neural networks and specifically we're going to look at regression type models where we have a continuous outcome. All right, so if you watched the previous video on classifiers, this is the same slide. How to use R for fitting artificial neural networks? Well, there's the neural network package, which fits one layer of artificial neural networks, and it's already packaged with R, usually comes with the install, so it's not really that big of an issue. The next one is RSNNS, is a package that allows for more layers. It's quite useful. Uh, I would, by all means, say you could try to work with that one. We're going to work with the ANN2 package right now. It's a newer package based on C++ implementation. If things work out well, then we may move on to TensorFlow and Keras, which uses the Google's deep learning platform. Uh, base, Facebook has a deep learning platform as well, but we'll skip over that. So we're just going to use the ANN2 package. So you may want to install that from the repository as need be from CRAN. All right, so here's some data. It's called shoe1.csv. You can find it out on the repository for the course, uh, or you can uh, look on Blackboard. It may be on there. Okay, so basically what this is is you've got two machines that are extruding soles of shoes, okay? So that's pushing the pressure of the plastic into the mold, and it's recording the pressure that's accumulating. And if you notice that it goes up dramatically, then it comes down, and then it kind of releases, and then it becomes a sort of state of nothingness, right? It's just floating along there without a whole lot going on. This is when the uh, press is open. So you've got a form or a mold, it, that's when it's open. So it's really not recording any useful information, but what we want to do is be able to model this. And if you quickly realize that that thing is not a straight line, so a straight line is going to work there. All right, so let's read in this data. Here's the code to read it in. And notice it has poor formatting. It has X1 here, and then it has FN2, which is the actual pressure. And so we need to know what these are. So the first column is the rep number. So you've repeated this on multiple shoes, so you want to have the rep number. And the fourth column is the machine number, because there were two machines that were used on this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is split up the data. So hopefully you've read in the data. We're going to break this apart, and this should work with the data the way it is if you just read it in. I didn't do any special formatting in R. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the unique shoes, and then I'm going to pull out the unique uh, machines. I'm going to create two indexes, one that's going to give me where I make sure that I have the shoes, each type of shoe, and that I have uh, each uh yeah, so I need each type of shoe here. So if you look here, the validation is where the shoe X1 is 1, and this is for the second machine. And then this one is the index for the ones where you're in one machine, and this is the index where you're in the other machine. And then we combine them together. Now this not in function, so we're creating a new function or operator in R, and we're negating the in function. So if you're familiar with in, it makes life easier, but here we're going to say train A is shoe 1, where shoe one is not in this index, and shoe one is equal to x one. Shoe at one x dot one is equal to one. So this comes off the first machine. Here, this is for the second machine, and then we're going to bind them together. And the goal here is we need to make sure that both machines are represented equally here. So that's what we're trying to do: is make sure each machine is represented in this. All right. So now we're up to where we can actually use the artificial neural network. So here we're going to ANN2, Neural Network, Train1. The columns we're interested in are 2 and 4. Only 2 and 4. It's not through 4. It's 2 and 4. And the, what we're interested in as our outcome is in the third column. For our hidden layers, we're going to do 101 hidden nodes on the first layer and then 12 on the second layer. So there's going to have two layers, one with 101, the other one with 12. Here it says regression equals true. So this means that we have a continuous outcome. So just keep that in mind. That's why we have this here. And then here the loss type is squared. And this is the same as for regular regression. Usually you're fitting a least squares line. The squared is the same sort of error that it's measuring. There are lots of other errors associated with or loss types associated with ANN2. And you can look those up. I'm trying to keep with the most familiar ones to get you going. All right, so let's give this a go. 
So here we're going to generate our validation set and the predictions. We're going to combine them together so they're side by side. That way we can see how well the data fits the predicted data. So here I'm going to plot it and then I'm going to put the points on it. And then here I put a color. But you need to specify a, the curve. So here's what this looks like. And if you look here, this does not look very good. This is the data This is that came out of this. This is our validation data. And this is the model. So you can see what the model looks like across that data. And you can see that doesn't fit very well. And you are 100% correct. It doesn't fit very well. And part of the reason is, is the type of unit that we're putting in here. If you remember, there were different transfer functions. Well, if we have a smooth transfer functions, it's going to be harder for it to come up with corners. This data set has a corner in it. Actually has two corners, one here up at the top, one over here. And you can consider this a corner as well. So we have to be careful when we're dealing with this that we actually think about what our data might look like and what to choose transfer functions that are going to work well with it. All right, so what we've done here is change our transfer function or activation functions. Here I'm doing the ReLU, the linear regression that uh, where you have a line and it's zero before the line and it takes off. I think it's reticulated linear is the name of it. But we'll just call it ReLU for right now. And that's the only thing I changed was just the activation function. And this will allow me to fit something that's more linear-like versus something that's uh, curvy, which is going to be default, I think, uh, the uh, hyperbolic arc tangent. All right, so if I do this, this one looks a lot better than the other one. And you say, well, I don't like this one so well. And to be perfectly honest, I don't like it so well either. But one thing I did think about on this is notice that this model does not take into account which machine it's on. So this purple is kind of an average of the two machines together. So that's why we're getting this picture. Now, if we were to break it apart and run it or add another variable into our model where we actually have the machine and when we predict we use the machine number, then we might get a different answer. But this is what we've done now, up to now. So now we can fit both classifiers and we can fit continuous endpoints inside of our models, our artificial neural network models. All right, see you in the next video.